What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to be taking a quick look at There Came an Echo. This is by Iridium Studios. It's a squad-based tactics game, which is not normally the kind of genre I'd get into, but this has got a really, really unique mechanic. This is almost entirely, there's only like one interface in the game, I think, that isn't controlled by voice commands. So everything in the game, including the main menu here, can be controlled by voice commands. Uh, so there's a push to talk feature, so if I press space bar, I can then, it'll it'll sort of mute the music a bit, and it'll allow me to talk, and while I've got space bar held, and the music's slightly muted, uh, anything I say will be recognized as a command. Obviously, I'm not saying anything that it'll recognize as a command right now, but if I were to say, press space, and say, options, it'll bring up the options menu, which is really, really cool. I think you probably can change some of these options as well via voice commands, but that sound, it seems really fiddly. So, you know what? Let's just use a mouse for, for this, uh, for the options menu. Yeah, it's nice to be able to get into there, but I think for flicking through these, you probably want a mouse. So, we've got resolution options, you've got some anti-aliasing options, uh, you can turn lights, shadows on and off, and for whatever reason, why is this at the bottom? There's a 30 FPS lock. I can only imagine there must be some issue with certain configurations of machines that the game doesn't run if it's not locked to 30 frames per second, but I can't envision any circumstance in the world where any human being would possibly want that to be on. But that's there if you want that on. Good lord. 30 FPS, jeez. Uh, controls! We have... well, there's not many because it's all supposed to be voice controlled. It's a very, very basic game from an actual control standpoint because you're supposed to do everything by shouting into the mic at it. Or, well, you're not supposed to shout, but... Uh, you've got keyboard, PlayStation 4, or Xbox One controls. I can't get Xbox controls to work, although I will say that, that it does say Xbox One, and I do have the Xbox 360 controller, so that could be the issue, but certainly when I was trying to get my 360 controller to work, uh, using the shoulder bumpers for push-to-talk, it just wasn't having it, it wouldn't register my voice, it was just saying, come on, speak, speak, why are you not speaking, come on, say things to me, uh, the, your character in the game is Sam, it's like, Sam, say things, Sam, you're supposed to talk here, Sam, Sam, do this, I'm like, I'm holding push-to-talk. I, I kind of figured that having a control in my hand and just using that for push to talk would be a nicer way to play the game than having to sort of hover over my keyboard the whole time and press space, but it's not having it for me. I don't know why, I can't figure that out. It should work, I would have thought. They're damn near the same controller, it should work, it doesn't for me. I can't speak for anybody else, maybe other people have better success with the 360 controller. I couldn't get that to work at all, which is really annoying. Uh, got audio and language, so you can kind of, uh, you can tweak things a bit to calibrate your voice. There's another menu that's better for that, but, uh, you got, yeah, you got your audio options there on lots of sliders, which is nice. Uh, you can change your voice sensitivity there. Medium seems to work out fine for me. Uh, we've got miscellaneous. I'm not even sure what some of these are. I don't know what Intel RealSense is. I think... Oh, wait, no, I, I tell a lie, I do. There's, uh, there is a... I probably shouldn't have that enabled because I can't do that, but there is another control method where if you've got a webcam enabled, you can actually move the camera around by waving your hands in some strange manner in front of the webcam. Uh, so you can uh, you can control all the characters on the screen by using your voice, and then you can move the camera around by flailing around like some sort of idiot, which... <laughs> I don't know, maybe people get their kicks doing that. I, I don't think that's for me. Uh, so we've got difficulty moderates. I'm really bad at this sort of thing. I feel like maybe I should step the difficulty down, but uh, I've managed so far. I don't you know. I don't know why this is here. We've got blood type. You can go blood type. You can. I don't know what that does. <laughs> There's blood type A, B, A, B, and O. What the heck is that about? I wish I knew what that one did. It's it's strange. Anyway, now if we head back out, we have voice calibration. There we go, we have voice calibration. So, we've got the mic volume there, that is actually going to be controlled by Windows, and if you change it, they will change it in Windows. So I turned it up at first, and then I realized it ruined several of my recordings because it actually changed my Windows uh, microphone settings. So, yeah, be careful with that one if you do anything like me where you're recording anything, so I've kind of left it back where it is. Got your voice sensitivity there and language. 
Uh, the language, basically, it can determine, it can be played in other languages and it can be played in other accents. So if we go there, if you have an American accent, you can set it to United States and it will pick up your American twang. Uh, if you have an Eng English accent, like my good self, you can leave it on that. If you have an Australian accent, you can play it on that. If you have a Canadian accent, you can play it on that. If you have an Indian accent, you can play it on that. It's, it takes into account quite a lot of different accents, which is quite cool. I thought there were some other language settings in there, but maybe that has to be done through the options menu, I think. But certainly, it's it's got a few different, uh, sort of, it's got a few different accent options. I will say, English comes in a lot of different accents, and there are a lot more accents than that in the world for English, so... A little bit limited, but very nice to see that it's there, so that's cool. And then you've got this bar that says whether you're too loud or too quiet or whatnot, and... Honestly, I've never found a setting that the game likes a lot. It's always either complaining I'm slightly too quiet sometimes and slightly too loud on other occasions, but hey ho. So, so say loud and clear to test recognition. See, I pe apparently peaked it there. I don't believe I did. Certainly, if I go go and check my footage, I'm pretty sure I didn't peak it. But yeah. At any rate, uh, we should probably actually have a look at the game. So we can say play. <laughs> I'll bring up a, a bunch of save slots for us. So I'm up to mission seven. Uh, so if I hold that and press say play, or, or I should probably not hold the command before saying a bunch of stuff. Let's let's just say play. It'll launch the mission for us. This is great. So we'll get a little bit of preamble, I think, with a bunch of voice acting. So I'll shut up for a bit and let you listen to some of the voice acting because we've got some good actors in there. Flash news update. What is it, Val? This facility was working on some interesting new PDE tech. If you grab the newer models from the supply room, you can switch to either of two alternate weapon types. So, the pistol and two others? Yep. And you get another accessory slot. It's like Christmas. Oh wait, Miranda doesn't celebrate Christmas, does she? No. Well then, uh, Hanukkah. Uh, so you got Corin, I believe, is Will Wheaton, and you got Val, is this mysterious shadowy figure who's giving commands from... I don't know where, she's just in your earpiece the whole time. Who's Ashley Birch? And it's... Got a little bit of the same issue I kind of said Gravity Ghost had, because Ashley Birch keeps popping up in a lot of stuff. And I feel like Ashley Birch, a lot of the time, just plays Ashley Birch. She's this mysterious shadowy agent who's giving serious orders to you. And a lot of the lines she delivers are sort of very quirky, weird, slightly strange, and it's like, these are lines from Ashley Birch, i.e. The, i.e. the character from Hey Ash, what you playing? The, these don't belong to some shadowy overlord figure watching over you. I don't know, it doesn't quite feel right. It, it's it's an amusing in its own kind of way, but it doesn't quite work. But there you go. Um, Ashley Birch admittedly was in Life is Strange, and she played an excellent character in that, so, because I didn't even realize it was her until I checked the credits. So, clearly she does know how to voice act. It just seems like most of the characters I've ever seen her play, or heard her play at any rate, uh, all seem to be very, very, very similar. I don't know, strange. At any rate, we have a loadout section, we have a selection of weapons, we have two of each of these weapons that we can give to the characters, and then we have each of the characters then has two accessory slots, and we only have one of each accessory. So you need to kind of divvy them up amongst your team. So, we've got the charge gun is kind of like a grenade launcher kind of thing. It fires a ball of attack, which does a big AoE effect. And you've got screw, which is kind of a rapid fire a rapid fire suppressing fire kind of thing, which is good for keeping enemies pinned down. Whilst your snipers take care of them, because you've got a couple of sniper rifles. I got your rail gun, which is a powerful gun, but it will chew through your energy reserves and you'll run out of energy pretty quickly if you use your rail gun a lot. So you've got to kind of balance them. I've kind of put two, two of each weapon on each. You could mix them up a bit more than that if you wanted, but I'm kind of happy with that loadout. I've got two, two that can lay down suppressing fire and two that can snipe if necessary. And then we've got a bunch of accessories. I haven't actually unlocked this third line of accessories yet, which would allow me to customize further, because so far I've got the first eight, and then there are eight slots, so it's kind of like one needs to go to each character, so... Uh, basically, I've made him my screw gun expert, so he's going to be mainly using that if I need anyone. If I need anyone to use charge gun, I guess it's going to be Miranda. If I want someone to use sniper, it'll be Grace. If I want someone using the rail gun, it'll be Syl. 
Uh, we've also got some pistol accuracy. Pistol is a basic weapon that's admittedly uh, I don't use as much as I should, and I think it hurts me because your shields and defenses in the game are tied to the energy that you use for ammunition, so uh, yeah, ideally, ideally I should be using the pistol more than I do, I think. Uh, we've got, that reduces the cost of her firing, uh, she is a sniper, which means enemy shots will disrupt her considerably less, and if I need to revive him, he'll get a lot more energy back, because uh, you, can, you, you can transfer energy between players a little bit. So that's cool. And then we've got this, we've got uh, one-time one time automatic revive, which actually that sounds really, really nice. I probably would have that equipped if I had access to it, I don't yet. Uh, have more energy on your character, also really nice, got some nice higher level things. Uh, increase the radius on the charge gun, yeah, that could probably go quite nicely with her charge gun uh, proficiency, I would say. And increase accuracy of all weapons. So some of them are a little bit vanilla, a little bit bland, they're just statistic changes, it's like plus 15% accuracy, plus 15% accuracy, plus 15% plus 5% accuracy. Uh, but some, some of them are a bit more interesting, increasing your energy is kind of cool, and so one time revives. There's a mixture of slightly more bland and slightly slightly interesting uh, accessories going on there, so you can customize everyone to a certain degree. So I suppose we should probably move out. Yeah, it doesn't like that one. Uh, okay, so we're gonna see this a few times. The I don't know if it's me, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't like my voice. Generally speaking, the voice commands thing generally tends to work pretty well, but it doesn't always move out. There we go. Okay, we got that. Jeez. Yeah. It's a little awkward, and the problem is, in the middle of the heat, in a, in a massive firefight, if I, if I issue a command and they don't do what I'm telling them to, someone's gonna get killed, I'm probably gonna fail the mission. That's a little frustrating. If they do what you tell them to, sure. If they don't, that's annoying. Cut off the block. Bird must want him dead and be able to turn over the We can't read them. Mir? Mir, can you read me? He's here somewhere. Keep moving. Okay, so we've got these nodes, got basically... Okay, I have control now. We've got our guys there, they're gonna wait until I tell them to do anything. We've got a bunch of nodes, we've got Alpha 1, 2, 3... 1, 2, 3, and 6, I guess? Where's 4 and 5? 4's down here, 7's over there, 5 and 8 there. So these are gonna be locations that we can move our guys to. I can tell them go to certain places. If I tell them to do a command on my mark, I can queue up a bunch of, uh, a bunch of commands together and move them all on my mark. Uh, we can tell them to open fire on specific targets, all the targets have a number, we've got this guy here is number 3, this guy is number 2, the red guys have more health than the others, so they're going to be tricky to take down. We've got 4 and 5, uh, I will say there are a lot of cutscenes in this before, some of the missions have a little bit of more preamble than that before they get going, and you can't skip them, which is a little annoying. If you quit a mission halfway through and you need to restart at another point, you're going to have to watch everything again, which is kind of annoying. And there are a lot of fairly tough guys in this. I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to deal with this mission. I may fail this. That's actually quite a lot of guys. Like, a ton of guys. Oh my word. There are 25 guys in this. Alrighty, so what I want is... Let's take... Grace Equipped Sniper. Yeah. Okay, there we go. She's Equipped Sniper. Grace, move to Alpha 2 on my mark. Grace Alpha 2 on my mark. And for some reason it's queued it up as Delta 2, which is not ideal. See what I mean about this not quite working? I mean, the whole point of the phonetic system is that it's supposed to be able to de determine between them a little better. Oh no, I've been ill last few days, so my voice is just a little bit congested at some time, so it's like, is that causing issues? It could be. Um, but, well it shouldn't. Uh, so now it says Grace go to Delta 2 on my mark, which is not ideal. I don't want to doing that. Grace Alpha 2 on my mark. There we go. Okay, that's... Tell you what, actually, um, she might do both there, so... Clear orders. Cancel orders. I forget what that one is. Cancel commands? Yeah, okay, right. So everything that was on my mark has just been cancelled. Grace Alpha 2 on my mark. Cool. So, she, when I say Mark, she will go to Alpha 2. I want... 
Corin Alpha 3 on my mark. Um, Miranda Alpha 1 on my mark. Sil Alpha 1 on my mark. Okay, so they're all queued to go to certain locations. So as soon as I say mark, they're going to go to where I've told them to. Whether these are the right places for them to go to, I don't know. There's obviously a very limited number of places you can order them to go, but that's by necessity as part of the design. Uh, you can see there's two little battery symbols by each of their names. That's how many times their energy can run out. Those The en the number, the 100 by them, is their shields if they, if they take damage. Mark. Let's get them moving. If they take damage, those shields are going to deplete. If they use specialist weapons like a sniper rifle, uh, they're, they're going to deplete even more. This probably isn't going to go too well for me, I suspect. Okay. Grace, focus fire on target two. <clears throat> uh, well, you hadn't had a target assigned before. She's a bit snarky. Corin recharge. Okay. Corin alpha two. He's taking a lot of damage. I want him to get out of there. Okay. Everyone focus fire on target one. So I got a sniper picking him off, probably. That should go okay. Grace equipped pistol. Can't go any farther. We need to hit these switches in order to open the door. These rooms seem to have some extra battery packs lying around. One for each of you. If you clear them out, you should be able to grab them. Okay, that is useful to know. That's kind of cool. I haven't seen that mechanic before. I was kind of early on. I was like, are we going to get replacement battery packs, or is it once they're gone, they're gone? So it's quite nice to see that there are some levels where they're actually willing to give you more of them. That's cool. Admittedly, I'm pretty okay for batteries for a lot of my guys. Uh, it's usually once you're below 20-25%, you kind of want to be looking to recharge them. If they hit zero, they will fall, and you'll have to sacrifice uh, a chunk of another character's energy. I forget how much. I'm not sure if it's like you sacrifice like 50% of energy to revive them for 25%, so you don't want to be doing that. If at all possible. Of course, you're then interrupting the flow of combat as well, so you really don't want to do that. There are four guys in this room. Can we take four guys out? Okay, and we've got there are there are four rooms and presumably four battery packs, and we can open the next section just by going to these doors. This seems I don't know. This seems unnecessary. It seems like uh, I would be going and fighting a bunch of guys for like no reason. I'm not quite sure I grasp what's going on this level. I don't know why I would want to go in and fight a bunch of really tough dudes when I could just go and open the doors. Okay, right, let's let's move them out. So, Corin Echo set... No? So, <laughs> that's a bit weird when they, there's like, oh, you're not talking loud enough, but he... I, I trailed off halfway through that command and he still recognized it. So, okay, they apparently don't want to go to Echo 7. Do we have to clear out these rooms? Okay, then. All right. Uh, let's figure out what we want to do. So, Corin Delta 6 on my mark. Uh, Miranda Delta 6 on my mark. Grace Delta 4 on my mark. Sil Delta 5 on my mark. 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 I probably want to get 17 out of down first. Everyone focus fire 17. No, they're not listening to me. Uh, everyone focus fire on 15. Which one's the railgun? I can't actually see which one's... can't see which one's using a railgun here, to be honest, quite honest with you. And no one's listening to me. Everyone focus fire 15. Everyone fire 15. Are any of my guys out? Grace, reload. Grace recharge. Grace recharge. Okay, good. I want to take out the heavy guy first, really. I'm under 20%. Uh, Miranda recharge. Try that could have gone worse. Oh, uh, we've got to clear the next room as well. We've got to clear all the rooms. Good lord. So, what, are you, are you saying I should send some guys around to Echo 2? I guess you are. Alright. 
Okay. Corin Bravo 8. Miranda Bravo 8. I will, at this moment, take the time to... Pause game. Ta-da! Command alias. We have some alternate commands! Admittedly, actually, I had set some custom ones here, and it hasn't re remembered them, which is... concerning, because I could have used those, and it wouldn't have done much. So, we have names of soldiers there. You can, uh, some of the commands have alternate ones, so free commands is all units, or I've, I've been using everyone. That works totally well. For whatever reason, that's one of the default ones, so you can say all the shorties in the club, apparently, and it will recognize it. You can put in custom stuff. It will rec recognize things. So, commands, move to, or you can then say instead, if you're really wacky, there's a party at. Great. So, focus fire on, fire on, shoot, attack, kill, on. Yeah. You could do that. Some of the commands is probably going to be a little bit less well recognized. If you just say Corin on seven, it might not recognize that quite as well as if you said focus fire on. I think focus fire on clarifies things a little bit better. So you got a few different options for for combat. So you can revive people, hold position, com uh, continue, shields up, shields down. I don't know why you'd want to put shields down in the middle of a firefight. That seems stupid. I uh, got names of all the all the areas. You could rename them if you want. Numerics, you can rename them. I think the easiest one to demonstrate things. In fact, you've got. Uh, in fact, you can queue up multiple marks. I guess you can have on mark one, mark. Uh, I wonder if you can have mark two. That would be interesting. Uh, not sure about that. I'd have to. You'd have to test that. That'd be really complex if you're like, okay, everyone do this on mark one. Everyone do this on mark two. But you could execute some really interesting mechanics if you could do that. I'm not sure whether you can. I like that zoom in has enhance. God damn it, really? Uh, zoom 2 has an interesting custom command that I totally didn't put that in. That's a de default one, I can tell you that much. What the heck? Why is that there? That doesn't even make sense. Anyway, this is the interesting one. The custom commands, what I want is we can rename the characters to whatever the heck you want. So, if we wanted to call Corin, oh, uh, I don't know, Mod? If we wanted to call Miranda, I don't know, Alzorath? If we could call, wanted to call, yeah, you, yeah, basically you can name all the characters after your friends and get, get them shot and tell your friends what to do. So, we could have, I don't know, Fixer? I'm not going to put three X's in there because I have no idea how it's going to interpret three X's in his name, but yeah, Fixer. Um, and, oh, I don't know, Sil could be Tolkus, sure. Yeah. Okay. We're good with that. Let's make sure that I saved them. Yeah, of course it did. Cool. Resume game. Okay. So now they should go by their alternate names. So if I say Alzarath Bravo 8. Understood. Alzarath knows what he's doing. But I think it's easier just to use the default ones, to be quite honest, because it doesn't give you any kind of reference anywhere on the screen what you've set them to. So you do need to remember which character you've assigned what name to. So if I say, if I say Fixer Delta 7 and Tolkus Delta 7, Understood. they know, they know, they know what they're doing. You can, you can put whatever you want in there. Admittedly, if you start putting a lot of things in that sound very, very similar, chances are you are actually likely to confuse the game. If you say, if, uh, I don't know, if you, if you, if you pick two names and you like, one's Rob and one's Bob or something, it's like, ah, uh, yeah, the game's probably gonna get a little bit confused from time to time. Fortunately, mod Alzarath Fixer and Talkers are sufficiently phonetically different that it can figure that one out, I guess. So we want to pin some movement them here, I guess. Uh, mod Echo 6 on my mark. Alzarath Echo 6 on my mark. That didn't, that didn't work, did it? Alzarath Echo 6 on my mark. There we go. You got all, your, all your commands are listed at the top if you haven't noticed, so it, can, it, can, it tells you what's going on there. So we've got Fixer Echo 3 on my mark. Tulkus Echo 3 on my mark. Mark. Everyone's going in. Quick, quick, quick. Everyone focus on 25. Tulkus recharge. Oh, he's down. God damn it. Grace recharge Tulkus. Fixer recharge Tulkus. Oh, revive even. Fixer revive Tulkus. Mod recharge. 
Mod revive Alzerath. There we go, okay. Grace, um, Grace revive Sill. Miranda recharge. Grace revive Sill. She's gonna get herself killed. Grace recharge. Oh no. Sill recharge. Uh, okay, well the room's clear. That was a thing that happens. Sill revive Grace. That room didn't go very well. I will say that much. Boom. There you go. Oh, Sil had the extra buff so that he revives people more powerful. I figured he got more energy from that, rather than anything else. And then each of these rooms gives them one battery each. So, actually, this like, it's not It's a fairly flexible level. That's okay. That's kind of cool. So, can I get round behind this room in any way, shape, or form? I guess I don't need... I feel like I don't need to take these guys out, right? Everyone Echo 7? Yeah, they're just happy to... Yeah, okay. I was just kind of wondering whether I have to take out the other half of the map, and clearly I don't think we do. We need that door open. Hit the switch. Activate override. If the specific commands specific to things like that, it will give you them. Alrighty. Uh, Alzarath, Charlie 7. I, I keep having to do... I, I, it's not ideal to using the alternate names because I keep having to do these mental gymnastics where I'm like, what did I rename that one? So, Alzarath uh, Charlie 7. Alzarath Charlie 7. Hostile if you... Oh, okay. It's totally not hostile. It's in the middle of a corridor. Okay, fine. Fine, let's head back. Everyone Bravo 8. So they're gonna take they're gonna take the really long way around, of course they are. So well, I guess that makes sense. It avoids there's a big open doorway there with a firefight going on in. No, they're gonna go through the. You guys take the strangest routes. You guys really do. This is very bizarre. I'm probably gonna refer to them by their ordinary names because seriously, this whole alternate names thing is awkward. I guess I keep having to. If it had a little sort of name, if it changed the names on the screen or had a, something like their name in brackets after it's somewhere on the screen that said, this is what you want to call this person, that'd be okay, but I'm going, uh, Corin, what did I call, um, oh, that was Mod, right? Miranda, what do I call, oh, what was that? Oh, Alzarath, yeah, yeah, okay. It doesn't, it's not ideal. You can do it, you can do it, and that's really cool that you can do it. Voice, voice activation technology and voice commands and stuff is, like, the coolest technology to me. It really is great, but it's confusing as anything. Okay. So, if we say, let's see, what do we got in this room? We've got, we got a tough guy down at six, so, Sil Bravo 1 on my mark. Gray, no, um, Miranda Bravo 1 on my mark. Corin Bravo 3 on my mark. Grace Bravo 3 on my mark. Mark. Everyone kill target six. Too hot for me. Sam, clear it out. Okay, they're gonna get... Corrin, recharge. You got it, Sam. Sil, recharge. Output energy levels are hit. Sil, recharge. Sil, recharge. Sil, recharge. And there's an example of someone not listening and getting killed. Grace, recharge. Miranda Bravo 2. Miranda Bravo 2. Corin recharge. Everyone focus on 8. Okay, he does. Everyone's clearly not focusing on 8 because they're hitting 10 there, but okay. So this is what I mean about voice commands being a bit finicky. Uh, had Sil actually recharged when I told Sil to recharge? Or had I, you know, done a mouse input of some sort? Because you can do a mouse input with these things. You can click on someone and say, hey, do this, do this, do this. I can say, hey, go... go. I, I didn't say, say Corin. I clicked on Miranda there, so I expected Miranda to do that. It's a bit finicky at best of times, I guess, but... There we go. Okay, everyone's up. Everyone's gonna go get their batteries. Corin is now actually a battery short, I guess. 
That's interesting, because two of those guys didn't pick up batteries. You'd have thought there would have been four in there. You'd have thought Corrin could have taken two. Apparently that's not how this one works. So I guess we have to pin some movement the next one, but that one's going to be tough again. Uh, okay. Some of these guys I'm kind of feeling like I should re recharge. Still recharge. Still recharge. Sill, recharge. Sill does not want to recharge. Tulkus recharge. Understood. Ha! He understands the name Tulkus, but only understands the name Sill. Right, sure. Okay. Tulkus Bravo 8. Tulkus Bravo 8. Grace Bravo 8. If you say so. Corin Bravo 7. Miranda Bravo 7. Miranda Bravo 7. The problem is, I think when if I start issuing commands and so they don't listen, I get more and more frustrated and it shows in my voice and suddenly the game now doesn't recognize it even more because I'm like, at this point, basically shouting orders at the game because it didn't listen the first three times. That's when things go very, very badly wrong. You do need to stay very calm for this. And I'm not good at that when things are going wrong. Uh, let's see what we can do. We can go to... Uh, Tulkus Charlie 3 on my mark. Who have we got down here? We've got... No, shut up, Val. Grace Charlie 2 on my mark. Uh, Corin Charlie 6 on my mark. Miranda Charlie 5 on my mark. Okay, I think we're... Mark. Everyone kill 13. You got it, Sam. So if we focus fire on the targets, burn him down first. Keep an eye on their energies. Miranda recharge. Miranda use charge. Here, Miranda use charge. Grace recharge. Oh, she didn't recharge in time. I guess it takes a second or so for that to happen. I was not quick on the mark with that one. So Miranda's now got a bit of a powerful weapon, so that's going to do some good damage there. Uh, Sil use rail. Tolkus use rail. Yeah, there we go. He's got some powerful weaponry. There we go. That'll take some guys down. Uh, Sil revive Grace. Hey, he, rec he recognizes the name Sil now. Okay, cool. Everyone's up. Everyone go get your batteries. Go and get some batteries. This was an awkward level, but it's good for showing the mechanics. Okay. Corin Charlie 7. Miranda Charlie 7. Miranda Charlie 7. Grace Echo 7. Tulkus Echo 7. I will say the style of this game is really cool, although admittedly in some cases the animation is not the best thing in the world. If you watch any of the cutscenes, the animations are really, really basic, but I, li I like the style of this game. It's a very cool looking game. The soundtrack is a combination of... Big Giant Circles and Ronald Jenkies, and Ronald Jenkies is one of my favorite artists of all times, and it's really freaking cool. So, yeah, the music, music is great in this game, through and through. Okay, activate override, I guess, is what we need to do here. Oh, Sam, at the same time. Corin, activate override on my mark. And Grace, activate override on my mark. Grace, activate override on my mark. Mark. Boom! Okay. Gotta sink some stuff up there. I don't know how much more there is to this level. This is quite a long level. But I've probably shown you a lot of what it's got going on, I think, there. This is pretty cool. I'm liking this a lot. It's, even when it's finicky, it's just a very, very interesting and unique concept, and I do think it's worth checking out. So, I'll probably leave, probably leave that there for now. This is uh, the vast majority of the mechanics. Uh, it's going to be £10.99, or your regional equivalent. So they've got a 10% launch discount going on, and whilst that's going on, it's also a bundle where they're packaging it with Sequence, the first game, in the, uh, uh, the first game that the studio produced, uh, which uh, it's... Very, very, very minor plot spoilers, because I don't think it's necessarily immediately obvious, but it, this game is set in the same universe as it, so uh, if you're very, very interested in the story and plot, uh, well, the first game is entirely relevant to this, and things do come up in the story that 
are ele- this game does elaborate on the first one and the first one elaborates on this they tie together in a very very interesting way so if you're interested in the plot of either of them I'd recommend getting the other so from a story perspective that's great uh, Otherwise, the story, I don't know, it may, may well be a kind of thing that you can take or leave. I played the first one, I love the first one, so I'm very interested to learn more about this world. This is a cool world. And maybe there's not a lot of replayability. I feel like once you've gone through this game once, there may not be much. I've, I've heard it's only about four hours long total, so I'm probably a little over halfway through the game at this point. Uh, but I don't know, there's a lot of cutscenes as well. There really are. The, if you don't want to watch a lot of cutscenes, the actual gameplay's cutscene ratio is probably like very close to in the region of one to one, to be honest. There's a lot of stuff that goes on between missions before you're actually allowed to do stuff. But there's some very, very cool and unique stuff going on. And voice commands is the sort of stuff that really gets me giddy about living in the future and all that. So if you ever want to point to a technology that says, yes, today we are living in the future, Voice commands are the thing that does it for me. Nuts to your hoverboards. Those hoverboards are gimmicky as hell. Voice commands are the coolest thing for me. I love when it works. But when it doesn't work, it's really frustrating. I don't know. It's This is pretty damn cool, though. When, when you can sync up a bunch of commands and send them all around without ever using anything other than your voice. I'm using the mouse for moving the camera, but as I say, there's the weird wavy hand thing if you want to use that. Uh, mouse works perfectly fine for me. This is cool. This is very, very cool. Through and through. I love it. So this is There Came an Echo by Iridium Studios. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Maroka. I'll see you next time.